Good morning, good morning, friends. My fellow Jesus lovers. This is the song the Lord has had me singing all morning. And the name of this album is Sila, which is my baby girl. It's an old fashioned hymn, come on. Oh, yeah, God. Oh, yeah, God. I'd rather be his than never riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. Yes, God. I'd rather be led by his nail. Crush him, God. Oh, yes, God. And the best Oh, Rabashi. I'd rather have Jesus than anything. Yes, God. That this world. Oh, yes, Lord. I'd rather have you, God, than anything, Lord. <laughs> than anything, God. Don't forsake me, God. Don't ever leave me, God. Your presence is all I need, God. I worship you, Jesus. You are so holy, God. You are so precious, God. You are so holy, God. I'd rather be faithful to his call. My daddy used to sing this song to me when I was a little girl. Oh, that means more to me right now than any other time. I get it. I get it. I get it. The king of a vast Worthy God. I'd rather have you, Jesus, than anything. Yes, Lord Jesus. He's To be the king of a vast domain. Come on. And be held in sin's dread sway. Oh, yes, God. So out to him today. So out to him today. More than anything. World of Forge to today. Yes. The King of a vast domain. Oh! Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Help us to choose you today. Help us to choose you, God. Oh, yes, Lord. I feel your presence so strong. Yes, Lord. This that this world. Today. Yes, God. You are so precious, so priceless, God. Nothing compares to you, God. Nothing. 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 Oh, I'm erect. I call this getting wrecked in the Holy Ghost. Uh, well, you guys can tell at this point, I don't care what y'all think. I'm just serving God and just and just worshiping Jesus no matter what, right? I want you guys to get in that place where you just don't care. You just don't care what Jesus died on that cross for you. He didn't care what man thought. 
he willingly died on that cross for you. He paid the price tag. And all we can do is love him back. And he paid it all, you guys. He paid it all. And so many times we're ashamed of him. So many times we're like, oh my gosh, I don't want people to know about the God I serve. You know, I don't want to tell them about Jesus in Walmart. I don't want to tell people about Jesus at a gas station. Well, you know what? He paid that price tag on that cross for us. That's the least we can do is not be ashamed of him. We should have a speaker and we should have a microphone and be preaching Jesus no matter where we go. It's like when you fall in love with somebody, you want the whole flipping world to know. You want the whole flipping world to know who you're with. You want the whole flipping world to know the person that you're holding hands with, right? Oh, I just got on this tangent, man. He is so good, you guys. I don't care if I weep in front of y'all because the presence of God is all I need. It's all I desire. And when I get in his presence, I hear from him. He like just wraps his arms around me and he comforts me and he he puts me in that still small place of just complete contentment. And y'all, if you aren't content, it's because you're not spending time with Jesus. Come on. So, uh, oh, yeah, Lord, I just pray you crash in right now, God, even more, Lord. You just crashed into my life, into my world when I sat down here, Lord. You've been crashing in all night long, God. And Lord, you want me to share, God, about honor right now, God. And so, Lord, I will obey you, God. Lord, I'm not the best teacher, but I know that you're going to put the words in my mouth, God. And Lord, I pray that you use me as a vessel of honor today. That I set any agenda I have down. The God that I just worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I feel your presence again. Oh, yeah, God, you're so faithful. You're so kind and you're so good, God. You give us everlasting mercy god you're the god of grace you're the god of wisdom you're the god of knowledge god and all you ask for us is just to love you back lord i pray god that people would honor you today god they would put you first god they would seek you early in the morning god they would seek you at midday god they would seek you in the night hours god they would turn off their dumb tv god they would turn off their own agenda, God. Good is not God. Even if you say it's good, is it God? The Lord wants us to have fun, you guys, but so many times we put our agenda, our agenda in front of the Lord's, and then we wonder why we don't hear from heaven. Yeah, Lord, I pray, God, as you usher in your presence into people's houses, into people's lives, God. Lord, you're there already, Lord, but I pray, God, as they welcome you, God that you would crash in and change lives, God. Help us to love you more in our own lives less. Help us to abandon ourselves to you completely, God. Wreck us in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Oh, okay, well, good morning. Well, I think the Lord has given me my whole head back, amen? So, you know what, I'm gonna say something really quick. I did a prophetic act a little bit ago. I'm really, really big into prophetic acts. And here's here's what I did is I, I took those um, bracelets off. I know y'all thought I was gonna keep them for eternity. Hate to disappoint you. But as I cut them off, I said, I break fellowship with sickness. I break fellowship with death. I break fellowship with the concussion. I break fellowship with brain damage. I break fellowship with being sick. I break fellowship <clears throat> with believing the doctor's report and I choose to believe the report of you Lord I choose to believe that you came on that cross and you died for my sins and you died for all my iniquities all my sicknesses you are the God that heals thee and that I can trust in you I don't have to trust in a doctor I mean God made doctors so don't get all weird on me but I'm just saying I choose to believe the report of the Lord he supersedes any doctor's report because he's almighty God these other people are just men okay so I want to start out by that. So the Lord woke me up and I was awake half the night and uh, he just kept saying this to me. Shell, I want you to talk about honor. And then he kept singing that song in my spirit, right? It's a, it's a hymn. It's an old fashioned hymn. If y'all weren't raised in the church, you probably never heard that song. But to me, those things are priceless. Oh, okay. So here we go. So the number 23 in the Jewish calendar, the Jewish tradition. I'm really into numbers and colors and, and, and all that because everything has a meaning. Okay, so the number 23 in the Jewish tradition, it's a symbol of death, okay? And then if you do 23 times 2, it's resurrection. So today is March 23rd, amen? We're coming upon the Passover 
which also talks about passing over the angel of death, okay? So I wanna just encourage you guys by the death in this is to put our lives down, to our ha have our flesh be dead unto Christ, okay? And have Jesus Christ live within us. So what does that mean? That means if God calls you to fast, you fast. If that means God calls you to pray, you pray. If God calls you to give $10,000 to somebody, you obey him, right? We're dead in our flesh. We're dead in our sins. We don't have, we're dead. So we, we shouldn't have anything rising up, okay? So Proverbs 3.19, somebody needs to hear this today. <clears throat> Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. I've been talking lately about like tithing and giving and, and you know what the Lord says about debt. And you, you don't hear these sermons that much in church, y'all, because most people have five credit cards. That's the average person in America has at least five credit cards. The average person, last statistic I checked, is over $50,000 in at least credit card, debt card, debt, whatever. But the Bible says, oh, no, man, nothing. So there's a bit of a contradiction there, right? And so, so you know, I, I know things happen. I know, you know, events happen, sickness happens, disease happens, layoffs happen. I get all that, okay? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, but the word of God is still the word of God, right? Um, it says he changes not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever, and I'm the God that changes not, okay? Yeah. So so it's still in the Bible, okay? So I just preach the word, and I let the Lord convict you, amen? Like he convicts me, he convicts you. We're all under the same Bible. So the word honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce, so from the first of everything, no matter what it is. Money comes into your hand, you tithe off it. Money comes into your hand through gift, you tithe off it. Money comes into your hand through unemployment, you tithe off it. Money comes into your hand through a parent giving you 20K, you tithe off it. Money comes in from your retirement, from your payroll, you tithe off of it. it, it God's not like, okay, well this one you have to and this one you don't. No, no, it says for, first of all your produce, okay? So I wanna, I wanna tell you what honor means in Proverbs 3.19. In that, it says to honor in your body, honor in your mind, honor in your estate. So that kind of covers everything. Honor the Lord from all your wealth. And from the first, not second, not third, not fourth. Don't pay your rent and then your groceries and then tithe. You're supposed to tithe first. Okay, Proverbs 20.20. No, 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 let's go to the next one. Sorry, I'm going to go back. So Ephesians 6, 2 and 3 says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. First commandment. Huh. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. God is really into the first. Okay? He's really into first. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you. Hmm. And that you will live a long life on the earth. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> so what does that even mean? What does honor mean in this? Okay, it is number 8566 in the Strong's Concordance. If you want to look it up, go right ahead. That's fine with me. Back to the honor in Proverbs 13, 9, 319. It's the number 1434. Okay, so if you all want to check it out, <clears throat> I'm an open book. Go ahead and check it out. So honor in Ephesians 6, 2, and 3. The number on that comes from the Hebrew 8566. That means to attribute honor. Ha, huh, imagine that. To praise, to celebrate that person's life. To treat like a present. I loved that one because I'm all into gifts. So if you guys have ever forsaken your mom and dad for a wife, if you've ever forsaken your parents because you don't like them, if you've ever forsaken them because they're abusive, if you've ever forsaken them because you're embarrassed of them, if you've ever forsaken them um, and dishonored them in your words, in your thoughts, in your deeds, um, God is not liking that, like one bit. It never says because they deserve it. It never says because they deserve honor. It just says honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So that, it, it, so that it may be well with you and you may live long, long on the earth. So, so what's the opposite of honor? Dishonor. What's the opposite of that? A curse. So let's go there. Um, back to the Hebrews 8, 5, 6, 6, attributing honor to praise, to celebrate somebody as a gift. It also means to celebrate them as a renowned hero. That's kind of interesting. 
So if you've ever disowned your parents, if you've ever cut them out of your life, if you've ever chosen a spouse or children or something and, you, and you've cut them out of your life for a season, you need to go back to them and repent. And you need to repent before God. Because you know what, if they've disowned you, I mean, you, there's not a lot you can do except for still love them but um, and try to honor them, right? But if, if you've willingly chose somebody in front of them, God is frowning upon that big time. And, and you're not going to have a long life. The Bible's clear. So you have to look at what the scripture says and what it doesn't say. I remember a theologian taught me years ago, and he was also a prophet, and he literally had the strong concordance almost memorized from cover to cover. He had a genius IQ. He was phenomenal. And him and I used to study the Greek and Hebrew for about six hours a day. So he said, it's just like when somebody talks to you or doesn't talk to you, always look at what they say and you always look at what they don't say. Because oftentimes what they don't say is speaking 10 times louder than what they do say. Okay. So we're going to go to Proverbs 20, 20, because you say, well, what's the opposite of honor? Hmm. So whoever curseth, whoever curses your father or mother or allows a spouse or somebody else to curse your father and mother, his lamp shall put out <clears throat> be put out in obscure darkness. Oh, I don't I don't like that. So, what does that mean? Okay, that means number 7043. <clears throat> it means if you treat them of little account is what is what the Bible says. If you slight them, if you ignore them, if you dismiss them, if you don't treat them kindly. The Lord says, the Lord says in Proverbs 20:20, 20, 20, "Whoso curseth curseth father or mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Well, I don't know about you guys, but people often ask me, why do you, why do you watch your mom so much? Why do you love your mom so much? Well, number one, I love my mom and dad. Number two, I want to honor my father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So people who just want to dishonor them and ignore them and not call on them and not check up on them. And you know, um, you know what, you're, you're not, uh, uh, you know, you don't exemplify godliness in that area. So I'm here to um, encourage you to change your ways. Okay. And this is the word of God. It's not, shall I bring in the hammer down, take it up with the Lord. Um, so all I know is that if I, what God was telling me today is that if you have a father or a mother and they're still alive and you claim to know the Lord, there is no good reason why you shouldn't be seeing your mom or your dad at least once a week. If you can, if they're nearby, you know what? You should be taking them out to lunch. You should be honoring them. You should be spending quality time with them. You should be making sure they have your, your time. Don't just send them a card. Don't just send them flowers. Go spend time with them. Go honor them, okay? Honor them. Treat them like a celebration. Treat them like they're a present that God gave to you. Come on. And don't let anyone else in, in your life allow you to, you know, get them out of your life. Don't even allow somebody else to talk bad about your parents, okay? God is really big on honor. And if you've ever, ever, ever chosen somebody else in front of your parents, today's the day to repent. Today's the day to go to your mom and say, I'm so sorry. Or my dad, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I, 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 I allowed that. I'm so sorry. I repent. Not, not only did I repent, but I want to ask you for your forgiveness because we can all say we're sorry, but true humility says, will you forgive me? Okay. Will you? Anybody can say they're sorry. That's still prideful. But when you say, will you forgive me? It requires action on the other person's part. So that's twofold on that. And that's for somebody. So anyway, so, so uh, Proverbs eleven sixteen: a gracious woman attains honor and ruthless men attain riches. <clears throat> so a gracious woman is the same in, in that, um, the Hebrew and the Greek on that, the honor, it means to be treated like a present. So a gracious woman, to all you women out there, I'm going to encourage you to be gracious. I'm going to encourage you to go after Proverbs 31. I'm going to encourage you to walk after the Lord graciously, to be a gracious woman, okay? So Matthew 10, 41. Now I'm going to switch gears for a minute. This is the other thing the Lord's talking to me about. So go make it right with your mom and dad today. And if you've ever disowned them, if you've ever put somebody else before them, you need to repent to them this day. You need to say, gosh, can I take you out to lunch once a week? And guess what? I'm buying, I'm buying every single time because I love you. Think about how you can be thoughtful to them, especially if they're local. I mean, there's no excuse, none, if you're not honoring them. Plus the Lord says you'll have a long life. <coughs> so if you want a short life, if you want to cut your life short, dishonor your parents. And it also says you're going to receive them with a promise, okay? So so God's pretty strict on this. He's pretty big on this. Okay. 
Hence why I won't give up on my mama or my daddy when I, he was alive. So Matthew 10, 41. Now we're going to switch gears about honoring a prophet. Okay. Somebody also needs to hear this today. Whoever, Matthew 10, 41, whoever receives a prophet, aka honor a prophet. I'm going to tell you what the other part of that means. You guys are going to love this will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous man, right standing person, as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. Okay, so what does that mean in the Greek? 1209, okay. So if you look up receiveth, honoring, okay, there's different translations. It means to take by the hand. Is that precious or what? To take hold of to grab a hold of it, to receive it, to give hospitality, to offer friendship, to receive the teaching, to receive the warning, to receive the instruction, come on, to give ear to it, to embrace it, to come in alignment with it. I'm going to tell you this again. Whoever receives a prophet, whoever takes a prophet by the hand, whoever takes a hold of a prophet, whoever receives a prophet, Whoever gives hospitality to a prophet, who, uh, whoever offers friendship or the teaching or the instruction or the warning by a prophet, whoever embraces a prophet, whoever gives ear to what the prophet is saying, will receive a prophet's reward. Okay, so a prophet's reward, let's look that up. It's in the Greek 3408. That means do wages in every aspect, financially and spiritually. I thought that was super interesting that if you listen to the prophet, you're going to prosper spiritually and financially by wages due by rewards. And it says also, <clears throat> if you don't listen to that prophet, this one will get, get you though. You'll receive the punishment by not listening to them. That one really jumped out at me. So people are saying right now, what the heck? Who's a prophet? Well, you know what? When people are self-proclaiming all the time, I'm prophet so-and-so, I'm prophet so-and-so. You know what? You need to ask the Lord, but I'm telling you what, if you know when you're knower that somebody hears from God and they stand in that office, uh, you better honor them, okay? And if you've come against them, if you've spoken against them, if you've written letters, if you've written texts, if you've written emails, if you've given hate mail, if you've stopped by their house and you've, whatever, I'm going to encourage you today to apologize. Because if you want to have that curse lifted off your house or lifted off of you, uh, yeah, you want to, you want to, you want to apologize trust me. I remember when I was under a prophet's teaching and he was also that theologian. And I remember, um, I would hear all these scriptures all the time. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. But I do remember the Lord. I, I remember the Lord one time. Sometimes I didn't like him. You know what I mean? Like kind of prophets are weird, kind of quirky, but you know what? They hear from the Lord. Okay. So, so I didn't have to like everything he had to say, but I needed to honor Okay. And when he told me something I didn't want to hear, or if he did something crazy that I thought was like outside of the box, um, the Lord was really, really, really adamant that I never speak ill of him, that I never get on the bandwagon, that I never send him hate mail, that I never text him bad, I never email him bad, that I honored him because I did not want to come under a curse. I didn't want to come under not receiving a prophet's reward. Amen. So, you know, as long as, as long as their teaching lines up with the word of God and as long as um, they're obeying the Lord, the Lord will talk to them. If they're, if they're blowing it somehow, some way, the Lord's going to talk to them because they hear from God clearer than anyone else. Okay. And the Lord will rebuke them. The Lord will punish them. So you don't have to, uh, but the Lord, you know, commands us. He says, whoever receives a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And again, I, I look through all the scriptures. I can't find where it says apostle. I can't find where it says teacher, evangelist, preacher, shepherd, but it does say prophet. I thought that's super interesting to me. I think it's because a prophet receives the most persecution. The, the prophet goes and he gives the message from the Lord. The prophet, you know, gets so much abandonment and so much suffering and so much persecution that I think, um, and, and we're, you know, you're a voice from God. So, so you declare and decree a thing and things will happen nationally, uh, worldwide. I mean, people fall. I mean, corruptness falls. I mean, at the hand of a prophet because life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? And so if you're a true prophet, you will carry out the king's message. message. And that is Father God's message, okay? So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so I'm going to say one a couple last things here. Psalm 105.15, touch not mine anointed, and neither do my prophets any harm. When you look up harm, it means harm. It means to not be evil, to not despise them, to not talk bad about them, to not come against them in word or in deed, okay? So if you've spoken against a true prophet, if you have 
sent a text to a true prophet, if you sent an email to a true prophet, if you bagged on as a pastor from the pulpit against another prophet, I encourage you guys today to repent. Because you know what? The Lord esteems those prophets and not that they're better than anybody else, but they are his messengers. And I cannot find one other scripture. And I look, trust me, where it says, do not do my prophets any harm. It doesn't say that about evangelists, pastors, shepherds, apostles. It just says about prophets though. So, you know, what? that's between Jesus, you know, it's between Father God and the prophets, I guess. But I'm just telling you guys, if you want to not be under a curse, if you want to be blessed, you need to honor that's the word of the day. Honor your father, mother, that it may be well with you. And you need to repent to them if you've ever disowned them, if you've ever put them behind somebody, okay? If you've ever, you know, disgraced them, disowned them, talked bad about them, or just neglected them, you need to repent today, okay? Um, 2 Kings 2.23, Elisha, um, he was a mighty, mighty, mighty prophet in 2 Kings 2. And uh, I was thinking of a scripture. I'm like, Lord, what happens if somebody comes against a prophet? Well, here's a classic example in the Old Testament. You might say the Old Testament is not the New Testament. Well, the Bible says he's a God that doesn't change. So he came to fulfill the law. He didn't destroy the law. Okay, so let's be clear. We can go toe to toe if you guys want to go, go down that path. But anyways, so in, in verse 24, so, so these, these boys, 42 boys were making fun of Elijah. He was a bald prophet. They were making fun of his baldness, okay? You don't, want, you don't want to make fun of a prophet. You just don't, okay? And word or deed or just accusation or coming against them, don't come against them. Do not bring a railing accusation against them. So the Bible says Elisha, who was the prophet, called down a curse. Not God. Elisha called down a curse for those people who wonder if, if uh, prophets are allowed to do that. It says, Elisha called down a curse. And I looked it up and it means Elijah called down a curse. And then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 boys. Okay, if that shouldn't scare the tar out of you, I don't know what should. So he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's a God that changes not. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to be those 42 boys right about that. Okay, so I'm going to encourage you guys. The Lord put that scripture, that whole passage in there for a reason, okay? Now, that's not to say you should walk in fear and, you know, worship the prophets. That, that's, that's not what I'm saying either. But I am saying that you better treat them right. And I am saying that, you know what, you better hold your peace if you have something to say against them. Let God deal with them if they're in the error of their way. But don't bag on them. Don't speak against them. And uh, you need to honor, okay? You need to, and, 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 the, and that, in that word right, right there where it talks about that, it means to treat them like a present. I thought that is just so interesting. And it means to give honor. So I want to tell you guys, I want to finish with this. Again, I don't have any idea why the Lord's bringing this up, but um, I, I'm not going to, you know, proclaim I'm some self-prophet, whatever. I, I, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm talking about all the prophets out there. But if you're a true prophet, you don't have to run around calling yourself prophet so-and-so. I'm telling you what. Because, you know, miracle signs and wonders follow you, right? In my name, you'll cast out demons. In my name, you'll heal the sick, raise the dead. That's to everybody. But when you are a true prophet, you read people's mail and things come to pass. And you see way ahead of time. Way ahead of time. And uh, and so a peculiar people, I'll tell you that right now. But um, they are God's mouthpiece, and especially in the Old Testament. But they're still the fivefold ministry in the New Testament, so they still exist. Okay. And uh, if you're a true prophet, you're going to give warnings. Um, if you uh, one who prophesies, you're going to give edification, consolation, comfort. But a true prophet does all of it. Okay. If you're a true prophet, you're going to see the signs of the times. You're going to see hurricanes. You're going to see earthquakes. You're going to see volcanic action before it happens. You're, you can pre, you know, you can see somebody getting pregnant before they get pregnant. You can see somebody going through a divorce before they go through a divorce. You can see somebody dying. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And uh, all I'm saying is that you need to give honor where God is telling you to give honor. Okay. And he doesn't say if you like them or not. He doesn't say if they're sweet or not. He just says give honor. Okay. And uh, receive them, receive them, embrace them to hold hands with, to take a hold of their hand. Because God, it says he won't reveal anything except to, he, he reveals it to his prophets first. Excuse me for my funky translation. He says he will tell them first. Okay. 
So they're the ones who are gonna shout it from the housetops. They're the ones that are gonna make sound an alarm. They're the ones that are gonna be the bold ones, right? When everyone else is scared to say something, they're like, oh no, I'm standing my ground. So I just wanna encourage you guys today, whoever this is for, it's a super long video today, but I feel really strong about it. The Lord woke me up several times last night and kept saying, talk about honor, talk about the honor with the parents, talk about honor, about honoring a prophet, receiving a prophet, don't come against a prophet, whatever you do, don't come against your parents, whatever you do. Um, once a week, take your mom or your dad out to lunch, tell them you love them, spend time with them, embrace them, learn about your genealogy, learn about you know how you can honor them how you can love them how you can constantly celebrate them because if you're in my camp my mom's you know on her way out and I would do anything in my life right now besides physically honor her to be able to pick her brain about our heritage our line you know lineage I mean all this stuff I mean I did a lot but I would do anything to honor mama okay and you honor even if they're dishonoring. You honor even if they're not loving you. And how, you say, well, they don't even want to see me. That's okay. You might want to send them a card once a week. Hey, I just want to tell you I love you. Hey, I want to tell you Jesus loves you. That's still honoring, okay? Um, and if you've ever done anything where you've disowned them or you've been embarrassed of them or whatever, I want to encourage you today. Pick up the phone and call them. If you don't have that kind of courage, get out a card and mail it to them. And just say, I'm so sorry for any time I've disowned you, any time I've dishonored you, any time I put a spouse before you or children before you or just, you know what I mean, for no good reason. And it's like the Lord wants us to honor and it is that it may be well with you. So if you want a long life and you don't want your life shortened, honor your mom and dad. Plus, God says he'll give it to you with a promise. Amen. So anyways, I just want to tell you guys I love you, and um, I'm feeling pretty good today. Uh, I get, I'm excited I get to hang out with my brother today. He's going to come visit his little baby sister, and uh, I'm going a little stir-crazy, but um, Jesus is so, so good, and his presence is so powerful, you guys. Nothing beats his presence, and when you're in his presence, money don't matter. When you're in his presence, Amazon don't matter. When you're in his presence, I'm telling you what, it's like I get lost in the Lord for hours and hours and hours, and by the time I kind of come to my senses, it's three, four, five hours later. And I've been caught up to heaven. I, I've, I've seen Jesus. And uh, I've had many encounters with Jesus. So I'm, I want to tell you guys right now to um, really saturate this. And you might want to listen to it twice or three times. And just set the silly phone down and, and just lay on your bed and put some earbuds in and just listen to it and listen to it. Because I might not be the most eloquent speaker, but when God puts something in my heart super strong, I obey God. Okay? And, and I've gotten to where, and I say this all the time, back off, or I don't care what you say. And I mean it because I care what you say as I love you, but I, I don't care about a negative report. I'm way past that. <laughs> when you've had my life, I'll tell you what, you get rejected every other day because you're a voice for God, okay? So anyways, I just want to tell you I love you guys. So Lord, I just pray that this would penetrate to the core of people's beings, God, that you would convict them. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, but there's conviction. So Lord, I pray that you convict your people. Lord, they would make the wrong things right, God. And if they've come against a true prophet, Lord, I pray for a repentance. I pray for text messages to go out today saying, I'm so sorry I bagged on you. I'm so sorry if it was an email. I'm so sorry if you literally went to their house. You would get in your car and go to their house and say, I repent to you openly. I'm so sorry. If, um, Lord, if there's been hate mail or something on social media or something on Facebook where you've come against a prophet, um, I, I would ask that you guys publicly apologize for that and just say, I should have never come against so-and-so as a prophet. You know what? They struggle. And who am I? Who am I? That's just arrogance and pride. Who am I to judge them? And so that's going around a lot right now where people are bagging on this prophet and bagging on that prophet. And I'll tell you what, when you're a true prophet, it is so incredibly difficult. And so I say we extend grace to the prophets today. I say we extend love and grace to mamas and daddies today. I say, Father God, that we would honor we would receive them. We would grab a hold of their hands. We would embrace them. We would listen to their teachings in the name of Jesus. We would hearken unto the voice of the prophet. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Last but not least, I'm going to say that real prophets are, they're, they're just peculiar. All right, let's just be clear. Just a little bit of weird. There's just a little bit of weird in a real prophet. But you know what? The closer you get to heaven, the more you're not a normal human. Okay, so you have to just put that aside and our pride makes us judge people, okay? I mean, people don't like Kat Kirk. She's got pink hair and it's like, give, give me a break, are you serious? You know, it, it's like somebody saying, I don't like you because you're 40 pounds overweight. It's like, who are we to judge, right? Or say another prophet might be super kind of eloquent as um, he prophesies, but in another one, it's just, just shouting and yelling and he's just kind of weird too. But is he saying the word of the Lord? If he is, back off. 
Let them be God. Let them be the messengers for God in the name of Jesus, okay? I love you guys so much, and I just want to share the heart with you, and um, let's just give honor. Let's give kindness. Let's give respect, okay? And when those events come to pass, you, you might not think they're so weird then, okay? And I'll tell you what, push comes to shove. When there's something coming down the pike, I'll tell you what, who are you going to call? You're going to call the Ghostbusters. You're going to call the Holy Ghosters. You're going to call the prophets and go, what is God telling you? I need to know what to do. So take a step back, judge less, love more, and bring honor. Amen. All right. I love you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.